is a 911 dispatcher, Malave. Do you mean please fire ambulance? Uh, please. What's the location where you need the police? Uh, 3427 East 149th Street. 3427 East 149. And your name? Darnisha Cooper. Darnisha, what's going on over there in uh, 149? Um, I just I want to report a missing child. How old is the child? 14. And what's the child's name? Aliana Dupreeze. Uh, spell her first name for me. A-L-I-A-N-N-A. And spell the last name? D-E-F-R-E-E-Z-E. -E -E. Dupreeze, gotcha. And is Eliana Black, white or Hispanic female? Black. And what's her birthday? 6 12 02. Okay, has she ever done this before? No. I put her on the RTA this morning because she, they give her bus tickets and she knows to eat her right down the street from the police station. And I gave her, uh, I put her on the bus and she just gets on the 10th at the school. And she said she, I called the school because I had a, a parent-teacher conference and they said she never checked in for school. What time did you put her on the RTA? It was about six thirty-eight when the bus came down. You know, you know, around that time. You said it's six thirty this morning. Yes. What school uh, did she go to? Eprep. Eprep. Yeah, on ninety third Union. East ninety third and say ninety Union. Yeah, ninety third in Union. And she never made it to school this morning at all. No, and they usually give out a phone call if the child doesn't come to school, but I didn't get a phone call. Okay. So that's why I didn't call until just now. Okay. All right. Well, she's trying to get his own car over to you now. Um, if anything happens or if you hear back, give us a call back because we're going to have an officer come make a report for you, okay? Okay. Thank you. Chilling video of a convicted predator stalking his prey. A sweet, unsuspecting 14 year old girl smiling on a bus with no idea of the monster who's laying in wait for her. Eliana DeFries, snatched on the way to school, taken near the bus on an icy winter morning. She ran back and gave me a hug and kiss. I was grateful for that moment as a. I almost missed it, because that was the last time I'd seen her. I don't understand how someone can take away a sweet, innocent child like Aliana. I want to wrap our arms around this family. Then, three days later, a gruesome discovery in an abandoned house. A young girl's body is found. She was just a baby. She didn't deserve this. She didn't deserve it. So what kind of madman would do this to Aliana? He's an animal. He's a demon animal. And I'm frustrated. I'm mad. There's too many women coming up missing or unsolved murders. And we're concerned. We don't feel safe. Women don't feel safe. And we need to bring this to the attention of the, of the media, attention to the community, and bring it to the police. And we want answers. Then, less than a week after Eliana's body was found, an arrest. Christopher Whitaker is a registered vendor who had done time in the past for felonious assault and dual battery. This defendant followed a child from a bus stop, kidnapped her, then savagely and brutally assaulted her and murdered her. Whitaker is now being held without bond, charged with aggra kidnapping, aggravated burglary, and abusing a corpse. He pleaded not guilty. I hate to say this, but I want him to suffer. I, you know, he made my daughter suffer, but um, I also don't feel like he deserves to, to live or taking my daughter away from me. If it's proven that Whitaker did it, the prosecutor says he'll seek the death penalty. During the six-day trial, prosecutors connect Whitaker through DNA evidence, footprint, a drill, screwdriver, and other tools found near the teen's body that he used to torture Aliana. One eyewitness, Kenneth Chambers, who had never come forward before, claims he saw Whitaker grab Aliana. And he was like this, but I seen him and did it, but I didn't know who he was. Chambers, now haunted by that decision, was a high school student at the time. He testifies he didn't call cops because he thought Whitaker might have known Eliana. 
Then the most dramatic moment in the trial. Prosecutors show the jury Whitaker's police interrogation. The world is going to hate me now. People are look at me like a monster. I'm not a monster. I'm just an addict that made a mistake. What shouldn't have happened? And now it's decision time for Cuyahoga County jurors. We, the jury in this case, being duly impaneled and sworn, find the defendant, Christopher. Uh, young one, probably. I'm sure what procedure is here. Okay. Hold on one second. We'll find out about that. We're just going to come to the chair and see if they want to. You can use the toilet. You can use the toilet. Is that all right? Yeah. Take them to the bathroom. We're going to go back out. Go across to the jail. Come on.
Just a couple of two arches. I got some two arches. Yeah. That was it. They didn't have anything bigger. Here, guys, it's, this stuff is right here. So this is, this is going to be like work groups. It's not cold. Yeah. Lunch? Yeah. You want lunch? I know. Right. Or I think, Tom? Yeah. Lunch. You're right or left-handed? Uh, left-handed. Left-handed? Mm -hmm.
We'll take off. We'll take off I'm, I'm Detective Carl, and this is Detective Anson. I'm this is Detective Why? Robinson. What you know? Yeah. Is that the one? Mm -hmm. Take some photographs of you, man. Tell you where to stand. Yeah, we're gonna stand. Probably stand up over here. And uh, over against the wall. Hands out your pocket. Open your eyes for me. Church do you have on underneath there? Yeah, uh, just in the tank top. Okay. So what we do is uh, we'll take some photographs. Why don't you take that off and take a couple more photographs of right what you got on, and then just keep going as we go, just like that. Just like that. You want to take your white shirt off? Throw it in here. Turn the test in the back. Left boot in this bag. Let's just hold off so we can take a picture real quick. Turn it 
some more. What size are those? Um, uh, uh, 11 or 12. Uh, 11. 11? Yeah. Okay. okay. Hey, put your left boot in this bag, please. Hang top, please. Right. Okay. Okay. I'm going to step out while they have you remove your pants, okay? I got them written down. No, keep your belt down, that's fine. One pair of socks on. I'll put the socks in. Mm -hmm. One each one. Okay. Put one sock in each.
Jangan Okay. Mr. Whitaker, before we get started, I just want to wrap your mind. You, I'm Detective Carl, it's Detective Ben tonight. Mm -hmm. I know it was kind of rushed when we came in here loud, so I want to make sure you knew who we were. And uh, before I ask you anything, I'm going to advise you of your rights, okay? Mm -hmm. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you in a court. You have the right to consult with a lawyer before answering any questions and to have a lawyer with you during any questioning. If you could not afford a lawyer, one would be provided for you free of cost. Do you understand those rights as I've explained them? Yes. Are you willing to talk to us? What am I talking about? So you're willing to talk to us and, and find out what's going on? Without an attorney? Find out what's going on. Okay. Um, Are you familiar with the area over there on East 93rd uh, by Kinsman? I lived over years ago. How long ago? I have a friend of mine lived over here. Uh, it's been maybe over... Oh, man. I'm say over 10 years. Maybe. 10 years ago? Where have you been since then? Euclid. I've been... Um, um, colony, a friend of mine, well, I really didn't live there. A friend of mine stayed there. I stayed back and forth with it. The same friend that, I'm, that I was with earlier, where it came. At Mayfield up. Road? Yeah. Okay. That's a friend that you were staying with when they yeah, came to the house? friend that I look out for. Who lives at the colony address? My Aunt Martha and my roof. That's where I live. Oh, okay. So you were just staying at the other house, or visiting the other house? Yeah. Whenever yeah. she needed me to come through to watch out for her while she's sick. 
And that address on Colony, is that the one that you're registered at? Yes. Okay. What's your Mar aunt's uh, last name? Martha Johnson and Ruth King. They're both your aunts? Yes, my mother's aunts. Do you have phone numbers for either of those? Either one? <laughs>
drywall work, scraped his kitchen, cleaned out the house, and he, he was trying to get the house um, ready to get occupied. He got people, I mean, they stayed here, but we was just there trying to fix it up, get the uh, water and the heat in, got, got the gas on, got the um, plumbing right. So were you working on the crew? No, it's just... This is me. I mean, he's just just you and Raymond, or was he with you? Buddy work, you know, just working for buddy. So what I mean is, was Raymond doing the work with you? No, I was just, I was doing the work. So you were in the house by yourself? No, there's people there. They live there. So the residents of the home were at the house. Yes. That, that's you said we. That's why I was asking. Yeah, because uh, every now and again his uncle would have me. So the residents were there. Mm -hmm. Does he live on the north side of four? Like if I'm coming, if I'm going up four from nine thirty three, is on the left hand side? Mm -hmm. South side. So the south side of four. Do you recall the last day uh, that you did the work at the house? Um, Will pick me up on probably Tuesday or Wednesday. You would get picked up to go there? Yeah, my buddy picked me up uh, and we went back down to 84. Spirit. What's Will's last name? Rucker. And he did some of the work with you? No, that's who I initially worked with, period. And we work on most of his houses. Mostly we work on the house on 84 where he's living at. You've been working here since last year sometime, just before, um, say about mid-summer. Do you have a phone number for Mr. Rucker for us? And does he own his own remodeling business, or did he just do it as a like a flipping houses? Yeah, it's, it's kind of an independent thing. He, I don't know if he consider it a company or just doing this. I mean, um, it's kind of like he owns a few properties, so he owns a few properties on the street. So we basically go back and forth, and whenever um, friends of his that own a property over in Cleveland Heights or wherever, Euclid, we go do the work there for him. So what time did he pick you up on Wednesday? Mm, probably around closer to noon, maybe between noon and two. So I had to go to my Aunt Martha and get some money so we could go um, out and buy some deodorant and stuff. So he picked you up on Fuller and uh, around between noon and 2 p.m.? Mm -hmm. Went to your Aunt Martha's? Mm -hmm. We went to a car wash and we went to my Aunt Martha's. Then you went to the house on 84th? Mm -hmm. Did you do any work for him or with him on uh, Thursday or Friday? For who will? Yeah, or anyone. Yeah, I was, no, we really wasn't working, we was just at the house. On, on which days? Uh, for the rest of the week, we just at the house. So Thursday, Friday? Yeah, just at the house and you're with Will? Um, probably like, I think uh, Saturday or Sunday I was with my girlfriend, Deb. Deb. Okay. Uh, with Will, is it at the 84th Street house mm -hmm. again? Yeah. 1340 East 84th. 1340? Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, we were actually working or just hanging out or? Well, we work in the house. We we just finished sanding the floor. We was about to put down some carpet. We in the process, was in the process of building a bar in the house. What time did you start working with uh, Will that day, Thursday? Mm, two. I'm trying to think, make sure we did any work on Thursday. We, uh, That did a week ago today. That's yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Trying to think, um, what did we do? We probably 
checked out a few times and probably did most of nothing most of the day. On Thursday, do you know what time you started? Probably like we do every day, get up around 10, 30, 11, sit around until either we clean up or but we don't work every day in the house because money is low, so we don't have the materials. So sometimes we just sit around. Sometimes. Yeah, but just that, that Thursday and Friday, you're seeing mm -hmm. that you worked at the house on 84th, mm -hmm. and you started around 10, 30, 11 a.m.? Mm -hmm. I mean, we got up around that time. I mean, like I said, we cleaned up 8. So you were staying over at the house on 84th at that time? Yeah, I stayed over there, and we just did nothing. So Wednesday night, you stayed overnight? Yeah. Okay. You think you woke up around 10, 30, 11 o'clock? Sometime around, no. All right. I'm not trying to tie you down to any specific mm -hmm. times. I, I'm not rem I don't remember yeah. specific times. I just know that. And I'm not saying if you woke up at, at that time, you got right to work. No. I, Sometimes I don't, we so. don't work. We just sit around or we might clean up or... We might have another job somewhere or whatever, but most of the time we just, if we ain't working at the house, we just sit around until you got to go to school later that day and then you get home and you know, just talk about what we got to do the next day or whatever. How do you know Will? I'm sorry. I use hanging drywall, any paps in it? You do, all, you do it all. Taping? Yeah, pretty much do it. I, I'm not really... I know how to do it, but I don't really, I can't really get it right by myself. You know? I know how to do it, though, but I really would have to have somebody with me to actually get it right. Somebody that probably know a little more than me. Did Will help you out at all on that house on Fuller that you were working on? No. You mentioned somebody did come by and help mm -hmm. though occasionally? I mean, um, Ray's uncle stays at the house every day, and, you know, he... Do you know his name? Uh, Levette. What's his last name? I don't I have no idea. So he stays at the house and helps out with the work? Mm hmm How old is he? I think that is like probably 60, 61 or something like oh, that. Also an older guy. Yeah. Is Ray about your age? A little younger. What about Will? A little younger. You're what, 40? I'm 44. 44? 44. 44. When you say a little younger, are you talking about 40 or are you talking about even Probably younger like than that? 32, 33. Okay. Uh, were you in? You mentioned that you were on 84th most of the day. You said you were in and out with Will. Or, yeah, with Will. Were you over in the Fuller area at all on those two days? Not at all. Once he picked me up, I mean, I don't, I don't have a lot of money, so the only way I can get around is if I get dropped off or somebody loan me bus fare. On Thursday or Friday, and Saturday and Sunday was with your girlfriend. Mm -hmm. um, did did we get Deb's uh, information? Did, can I get Deb? Is it Deb or Deborah? Deborah. Is it just uh, D E B R A? No, D E B O R A. O R A. Okay. And what's her last name? Godfrey. Where does she live? I don't exactly know her address, but it's the Regency Apartments on Ansel. Those are the ones closest to Superior? No, they're off Way Park. Not the towers right there, but a little farther up the street. Okay. Do you know her apartment number? Uh, 44. Yeah, 44, 43. So 43 or 44? One of them, I mean, you go up to the, one, two, turn the corners right here, it's not 40, I think, I'm trying to think, I think it is 44. Uh, do you have a phone number for Deborah? And... Other than staying with Will, would you stay with Deborah at all? Yeah, I stayed tonight with her. Um, I was at her house last night. And last weekend? 
Yeah, just this past weekend. I was okay. Yeah. For my birthday, my birthday was Sunday. I was with her Saturday and Sunday. Yeah. Do you ever stay over with uh, Anita? Yeah, I stay when she needs me. I mean, my daughter stays with her, so I'm like, she's not really supposed to have a lot of people in her apartment, so I don't stay there a lot. I was like, if she's going about to have surgery, I'll stay with her and look out for her. Um, or she just come out of surgery. I mean, I always go to all her surgeries with her. What's your daughter's name that stays with her? Alexis Whitaker. How old is she? 19. Anita's not her mother, though? No. I was just curious because she's staying with Anita. Yes. Yeah, she called her mom, but that's no, not her mom. Because Anita's been in your life that long? Yeah. Um, the parole officer said arrested you mentioned something about your cell phone. Is this the daughter that has your cell phone? It's not my cell phone. It's actually Anita's Obama phone. And she was going to give it to me tomorrow so that I have a way to get in touch with everybody. So you don't have one of your own that you use no. to call Will or anybody else or Ryan or stuff? I had a cell phone. It was an LG Cricket phone, but it wasn't on. I used, the only way I could use it was on Wi-Fi, so I had a call app. And yeah, that's the only way I used that, but. I was like, no, I didn't have a phone. I'm sorry, a call app? Yes, uh, you download those apps from, you know, whatever. And it's like a text down app where it's like... <laughs> I don't know. You're more, I, I don't know that. No, it's about like if, if, if your phone is not on, then you can download the app, like a text now or call app, and it'll give you a number. And if you're on Wi-Fi, you can use that to call people and text. What's, what's the name of the app? It's text now. Text now? Mm hmm on something new. So you use that app with your phone that you don't have minutes on and you're able to communicate with people? Yeah. If you have Wi-Fi. What was the number to that phone? I'm trying to... If you... So as long as there's like free Wi-Fi in the area, you can link out of that and send yeah, text. If there's and that free Wi-Fi, or a lot of times Will would turn his hotspot on so I could use it, so I could go on Facebook or tagged or whatever. I or, didn't. I didn't even know there was a possibility. Did you? Mm -hmm. Do you use Will's phone as a hotspot for the Wi-Fi? Yeah, I mean, or whoever it's like. Whoever might be in the house that allowed me to use the hotspot. Okay. When I'm at Anita's, she turned her hotspot on so I could use it. Uh, Anita's, uh, Anita's Obama phone that you sometimes use and that your daughter sometimes uses, what's the phone number for that? I don't know. I, 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 I haven't had an uh, Obama phone yet. She was just going to give it to me tomorrow because she said it had like 400 some minutes on it and I asked her if I could use it. She said, yeah, well, Alexis got it when she bring it back. You can use it. This, this phone number you gave me. Is that under your name then, or do you, when, in order yeah, to access this app, do you have under something my else? email. Yeah. So you'd have to have an email address in order to use it? No, no, I mean, as long as I could log into anybody's hotspot, I mean, in order for me to log into your hotspot, you got to give me your password to log in, so. What email address is it associated with? Um, Whitaker Christopher at Gmail. But it's, is that one word? No, it's Whitaker. Is it Whitaker dot Christopher? But it's C H R I S T O P E R. Without the H? Yeah, at Gmail. I've just honestly never heard anything about that. I, I didn't know it was possible. Yeah. Um, 
Do you do you know of uh, any anyone else in that area, Fuller, besides Ray? Anybody that you visit? Any uh, friends, relatives, anything like that? No, the only reason I went to that area was Will owned the building that got tore down. Ray rented the store and uh, he put a studio in the building, and we would go over there for like rap battles or. Just to hang out with Ray every now and again, whenever they had a little party, and um, that was a recent part, wasn't it? Yeah, probably like two or three weeks ago. It was on the news. Do you know? Um, have you seen the news or anything recently in mm -hmm. the past week or so? You yeah. know what's going on in yeah. that area? Yeah. So then you know why I'm asking all these questions. I know. Are you familiar with the girl that went missing? I do not know anything. You don't know her? When you were over there working or anything, did you ever see her? Never. I wasn't even out that early in the morning. First we had heard about it, I was in the car with uh, Ray's brother T. We were going to move a friend of his and we saw a lady passing out flyers and we stopped and he grabbed two flyers and was reading the flyers for as we heard about it. What day was that, do you know? Hmm. Yeah, that was like a, that, yeah, I did go back over there that Friday because I went and helped him move. Okay, uh, so Friday you yeah. were and on Fuller? Went, yeah, and I went back home, yeah. And people were passing out flyers? Yeah, it was, I don't know if she was white or Puerto Rican or something. She was standing right there in 93rd and Kansas passing out flyers. Some females passing out flyers. Mm -hmm. Do you recall what the flyers looked like? They had a picture of the girl and they told they had a description of where she lived and the time description or whatever. It says she was missing. That's about it. And after that we just would see what we saw in the news. So you you took the flyer, you didn't recognize her at all, you hadn't seen her when you, while you were working around the neighborhood? Yeah. Okay. Do we have one of those? Um, you, who were you with, you said, when you got the flyer? Uh, Ray's brother, T. We Do you know his real name? No. We went to Renegade Hall and went to the west side to help a friend of theirs move. She moved up to, I forget the name of the street, but it was further up, 93rd. Okay. Um, on the west side? Yeah, she moved from like oh, in the that. Clark area somewhere. Okay. Did T get a copy of the flyer too? Yeah, he's got a copy of the flyer. Did it, he recognize? Is T, is T familiar with that area? Yeah, he lived over there all his life. Did he recognize her or know who no, she was? No. Did the female that was passing this out tell you who she was or why she was passing no, out? He, I, I'm I just wondering if it was I, a no, family member or something. I didn't get out the car. He got out the car and ran over and got the flyer. What car were you guys uh, riding in? Um, Uh, T's girlfriend's cousin's car. Yeah, that doesn't tell me anything. Do you know what kind of car it was? Mm, it's like a, like a blue, or like a dark blue, or black, like um, Ford, or I'm trying to think, is it a Ford Taurus, or I think it might be a Ford Taurus. Ford Taurus? Okay. T was driving it? No, she was driving. And you don't know her name? No. Ray's brother T and Maybe T's girlfriend? No, T's girlfriend wasn't, wasn't there. T's she girlfriend's was sister. I'm trying to figure that. Cousin? Her cousin. Okay. T's talking. girlfriend's cousin. Cousin. Okay. Mm -hmm. And she was driving. Right. And T's the one that actually got the flyer. You yeah. didn't talk to the female. No. So you didn't get any I circumstances. Is this the... Is that the flyer that you're referring to? That's exactly the flyer. Okay. Yeah. Um, I see on here that it mentions a time. Mm -hmm. Is that what you were referring to when you said you don't even you weren't even over in that neighborhood around that, that early in the morning? I don't even hang in that area that time in the morning. It's too crazy over here. Okay. So nothing about her looks familiar. You don't know no, her. Not at all. You have no information as nothing. to her whereabouts or what happened nothing. to her. 
What What's the next thing that you heard about what was going on over there? I mean, what I heard on the news. Basically. What did you hear on the news? Uh, they discovered the body. Uh, they weren't releasing much information. I mean, I don't know. Just yeah. basically what I heard on the news. Did you watch? You saw? So you saw the news? Yeah, I mean. Did you recognize the area? TV, yeah, it's, it's, it's fuller. I mean, I've been going back and forth over there for about a couple of years. Well, I'm just wondering if when you saw the news, you saw the house. Did you recognize the house and where it was on Fuller? Yeah, we passed the house all the time. Did you ever see anybody over at that house, working on that house, uh, uh, doing anything over there? I never saw workers over there, but they said they seen workers over there. Who, who has seen the workers over there? Uh, T and I mean, people that live over there that over there every day. Recognize the house on the news. Mm -hmm. I never saw, never saw anyone over there doing any kind of work or in the yard or anything. Mm -hmm. I mean, just like every other house around there, if it's empty, people hit it for scrap. Did you ever see that happening? Is what I'm asking. I, mean, I didn't hit houses for scrap with them. I mean, it's like not an uncommon thing around here. Were you ever in that house? I mean, I'm not going to lie. Yeah, we went in the house. Me, T, and what's uh, the other guy's name? Um, what they call him? What is his nickname? They call him Boogie. Um, what? Buggy. Boogie? Yeah. I mean, we went and we took the hot water heater and the furnace out. T and Boogie? And we took a pe couple pieces of uh, some wire and some, um, you know, little metal stuff connected to the furnace. Took that out. And took this so you're talking out. about the piping and wiring? Yeah. Took this scrap yard. How long ago was that? It's like Monday, Tuesday, when we was there. So it was recently. I mean, Monday and Tuesday, then a couple of days later, we heard she was missing. So we were like, wow. And they said she was found in that house. So Where did you scrap the uh, metal and all the rest of it at? At Etna. At Etna? On Etna scrap there, yeah. At the one that was like 84th or so, you feel? About a track? 70 something in Etna, yeah. Or is it 80 something or 70? I don't know. Oh, tracks, right? Yeah, right about the tracks, yeah. Whose name did you guys use? Because uh, I know they require you to have a name when you're doing a scrapping. Uh, Boogie used his name. I don't know his real name. You remember what day you scrapped that stuff? Yeah, we scrapped it the same day. We scrapped, uh, we took a load out of the building. I think Monday took another load. Yeah, probably two. Did you burn the insulation off the wire? Uh, burn nothing. No. Okay. Wrapped it up. It includes the furnace and water tank and all that. Mm. Is the electricity uh, connected over there? I don't know. I'm just wondering why you're doing the work, if you noticed. No, we have flashlights. Oh, okay. Can you describe the uh, house for me? Where you, how you went in, what, what mm. door? When they went in before I did. Okay, so what door did you go in? And when I went in, I went through, and it's in the back, it's like the little stairs, through like a little hatch or whatever. You go straight down the stairs. Where do the stairs lead you to? To the basement. Yeah. You step over all that garbage they had back there and go straight in the basement. Are you talking about like one of those... Uh Tornado like shelters? Storm doors. Yeah. 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 So, did they open those or did you open those? I didn't open them. They was already open when I went down there. Okay. And that, that storm hatch actually leads directly into the basement? Right into the basement. Did you take the stuff right back out that door or did you go out yeah, another that's door? That's exactly the way we I went in and came back out that door. Um, where did you guys park the vehicle to load all this stuff up? Yeah, we just put it on like a cart, a shopping cart and took it up the street and the next morning we put it in the van and took it to the um, scrapyard. 
push it up to the street to the house you were working at? Mm -hmm. What time of casting you went to the scrapyard to get rid of all that stuff? <sighs> Probably like early afternoon, maybe like somewhere around 11 30, between 11 30 and 12 30. Maybe a little later, I'm going to say 11, 30, 1, 30, between that time. And whose car did you use to take the scrap up to the uh, Etna shop? Uh, T, I don't know if it's T's uh, van or his girlfriend's van. What kind of van is that? A little gray, little family van, or I don't know what kind of it is exactly. A gray van. It's well, always parked in the driveway right there. On Fuller? Mm-hmm. Do you know how much you got for it? Not much. Like, it was like $37 split between three people. $37? Right. That's why I don't like scrapping. Yeah. How long did it take you to get the furnace and all that stuff out of there? It don't take long. I mean, you go in and just practically one pipe you unhook and then you just grab it and yank it and you come out. Thirty-seven dollars doesn't seem like it's worth the effort. It is really. Ain't, but I mean, so the last time that you were in that house was on Monday or Tuesday. Yeah. And you never went into any other part of the house other than the basement. No. Okay. Um, well, if I was to tell you that we found your DNA inside the house in the upstairs, would that surprise you? Probably through the kitchen, maybe. So you did go upstairs. Okay. What part in the kitchen were you in? Coming through the kitchen, going to the basement stairs. That's about it. I thought you went in the hatch and it led you I directly to the, the basement. Hatch that, yeah, I did go through the hatch and I went up to see if the kitchen counter was in there because Ray had wanted to know about the kitchen counter. So you used the basement steps to go upstairs to the kitchen? Yeah, and then, um, no, no, actually I went out the, um, cause we was going to take the, uh, the storm doors, the metal storm doors, but we didn't know how to get them off. So you went and outside we the basement and make all that noise. You're saying you went outside the basement doors, yeah. the hat, that storm hatch, and then went inside the mm -hmm. house through that. Yeah. Okay. Was that those doors open? Did you have yeah, to force them open? open? No, they, was already they were open. open? Okay. Sorry. Somebody else had already been in there. When you got into the kitchen, what did you see? Nothing really, because our attention was on the um, storm doors. It was like, well, we can probably get a few dollars for that. So we just left it alone. I'm just wondering, inside the kitchen, you said you were looking for countertops and stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, we it's like we didn't have the tools to take them off or whatever, how, whatever we might have needed, so we didn't even bother. So the furthest you went inside the house was the kitchen? Right there, the okay. kitchen and the door and look at that um, thing. And, but mostly when we went in and out to get the furnace, we went through the um, storm house. Where were the countertops located? Like what's wall in the kitchen? Truthfully, I can't even remember right now because I was focusing on the storm doors. Yeah, I wasn't trying to get something that I couldn't get no money for. Did you... You're still using your flashlight in that, right? But this is daytime, correct? No, it's nighttime. That we went in. Okay, what time at night on uh, Monday and Tuesday did you go in there? Probably like after 10. After 10 p.m.? Yeah. So it was really dark in there? Yeah. And how long do you think you guys spent inside the house total? Probably take, take this work out. 10 minutes to get the furnace out and then another 10 minutes to get out the hot water. Oh, so at the most, maybe a half hour total? If that. What kind of tools do you, did you use in order to get this stuff out? Um, we used just uh, a pipe wrench on to get it, just to loosen up the thing and that's really we carried, we carried them out. We didn't take care of them out. No other tools were necessary? I mean, I, I saw the house. I, I understand that it was pretty much abandoned for a while. Mm -hmm. 
Um, was most of it disconnected, or did you have to use any pressure or no, muscle no, to get it? No, no, just the pipe wrench, you just, it came right loose. That was it? Okay. Did you bring these tools with you? Hey, we took a T head of pipe wrench. We took the pipe wrench and we put it back in his pocket and left. So you didn't leave any behind? Mm. Do you have your own toolkit that you use when you're working on these houses no, for I Will use, and Ray? I use Will's tools. Will's tools? Yeah. What kind of tools uh, do you, are you using when you're doing these jobs? Depending on the job. Like drywall. Drywall, we basically use. Um, a drill and measuring tape and probably um, a board cutter or whatever. You like installing the drywall with nails or you use a screw gun? Yeah, no, it's the um, drill, yeah. A drill? Mm -hmm. I used uh, with the drywall, I used a uh, battery drill. I just want to make sure I'm understanding you never went into any other part of the house upstairs other than that kitchen? I would not need to. So you didn't enter the dining room at all? Not that I can recall. I mean, if anything, I probably told them to hurry up and let's go. So they went in that part of the house? I mean, it was three of us. I mean, I'm trying to get, I don't know where they was at. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm trying, I'm getting the furnace when I got the furnace, whatever. But when you're all in that kitchen, you got your flashlights going, you're trying to take off the storm door. No, we never tried to take it off. I just looked at it and looked. I couldn't see what type of screws or whatever because I thought it was screwed in. But it's like, if we'd have got it, we'd have needed to get like probably some type of crowbar and take it off. Mm -hmm. And it would have made too much noise. But we didn't bother with it. So I can tell you that we didn't find your DNA in the kitchen. That's not the, the room that we found your DNA in. Mm -hmm. That's the reason I'm asking you if you went into any other part of the house. Right? Mm. You know your DNA is on file. I mean, I'm yeah. not... Yeah, I mean, I not, had a case back yeah. in 04. The kitchen isn't where we found it because mm. there was nothing in the kitchen. The kitchen was empty. The dining room is where we found your DNA. Mm. Do you want to think about whether or not I you mean, were in that room at all? Thing. Let me get it right. Now, okay. Oh, bullshit. I want to get it right. We go in and take that. Look at the door. Um, See, so had a tool bag. Um, yeah, the crowbar that I used to knock the little board out the way so that I could. Get the um, hot water heater out. Uh, other than that, I mean, what does T's uh, tool bag look like? Uh, black tool bag. Okay, because when I asked you, you said that he only brought a pipe wrench and that he put it I in his pocket. I brought a pipe wrench. And you said I used a pipe tools wrench. used pipe wrench to loosen pipes. Yeah, it was I, T's I used, pipe wrench. It was he T's used pipe and wrench, put, but I brought the pipe pocket. wrench. But like I said, they had been down there before me. They came and got me. Okay. To come. So they went into the house before you did and then went and back I and did, got you? I did pick up his bag. Okay. So I don't, I mean, it's like we trying to get in and out because, I mean, police arrest people for going in uh Veda got arrested for being in a bando, scrapping, and a couple other people got arrested for going, so we trying to hurry up and get out, in and out. Okay. So you guys took the tool bag with you when you left? Yeah, I mean, it's T's tool bag, so I, yeah. Did you go back on Tuesday? Mm, no, we no need to. We had the hot water heater in the furnace. A couple pieces of, um, uh, vent thing and some duct water. work. Yeah, the duct work. So I mean, really, what no need to. Is 
then how do you explain your the, your DNA and actually your print we in walked, the dining room? We walked room? around the house, but we just didn't walk. I mean, it's like we didn't focus in there like we in here trying to see what's in here. We just looked around. I mean, I'm not saying the basement and the dining room was the only thing we looked at. I mean, we looked around the house, but I didn't go around the house like just trying to see what's all in here we can take. Did you find anything in any of the other rooms that you guys took or touched or no, you know or what? I, did, to I, went up, I did go upstairs because we went to see if they had a cast iron tub up there. Because cast iron tubs. Are you talking about the second floor? Yeah, we went up to the bathroom and looked, came back down. Did you go into the bathroom that's on the first floor? And, and I didn't even know it was the bathroom on the first floor. Okay. Well, that might explain the DNA in the in the dining room. I mean, if they're walking around each room looking for stuff to take. Do you recall the, the, the condition of the dining room when you were there? It had um, rolled up uh, like the little carpet stuff in there, like rolled up here and there. And that's about it. You're talking about the padding that's used yeah, for carpeting? Padding, yeah. And a bunch of it in the backyard. Do you remember if that padding was in any other room besides the dining room? Off the top of your head. I mean, I'm not. No, I, don't. I, I know it was dark in there, so I don't expect you to memorize it. I'm trying to get it right, but I'm sitting here. I'm nervous yeah. because I'm actually in the house that this girl's body was found in. So I'm like, that's understandable. I want to get this right. Yeah, and I understand that, and I respect that. I, I'm just, in order for us to make certain that we have our information right. correct, I, I have to pinpoint some of these and things. I, for I have no problem with it. Okay. Anything I got to do to clear me up. And 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 you've explained how your DNA or prints could have been in that dining room. Where we found it, that that's understandable. My, my print and everything might have been on the door when I was touching the um, iron the door, trying to see how to take. I thought at first the storm I, door. You're yeah, I'm thinking to. at first I could probably just yank it off, but then it didn't move. So it was on there pretty tight. Yeah, pretty much. Did T or or is it Ray uh, tell you? Oh, excuse me, T and Boogie. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. um, tell you how, if the doors were open when they got there. No, they never said it. They said the doors was open when we went back, though. They was like, I said that we got to kick the door in or whatever. Because that's breaking, you know. Well, everybody knows it's breaking in or anybody, you yeah. know. Compared to that, that's nothing. So So you don't know if they used any force in order to I get into the house no itself? how they got in. I don't know if the doors was already open. But he did say somebody had already hit the house. So I guess it probably was already open. Okay. Getting back to her now, now that we've got the house down pat. Mm -hmm. You've never met her, you've never seen her before, you didn't recognize her when you no. saw the flyer? Never. Okay. She's not a friend of yours or um, somebody that you talked to on the street when you were working on the street? I would have no reason to speak to a 14-year-old. Well, sure, she's a 14-year-old girl, I can understand that. So then, uh, then my next question would be, can you explain how your DNA, your semen, would have ended up inside her? I don't know anything about that. You don't know anything about that? I mean, I, I wasn't even over there on that day. Okay. You weren't over there. Uh, then I'm, I've got to wonder how your semen could have ended up inside of her. So now we have your DNA inside the house. We have your fingerprints inside the house. Yeah, I've, I've and now... Now we have your DNA inside of her. And this is just the beginning because you know there's going to be more things that are going to come up mm -hmm. once they're finished testing it. Mm -hmm. So I'm asking you this now. You can get in front of this, straighten this out, tell your side of the story, or you can just let us assume whatever we want to. It's, it's up to you. All right? You want to explain to us what happened? I ain't really got much to explain for it, huh? Well, sure you do. How did you meet her? How did you get to talking to her? Did you see her before that day? Never. Never? Well, then how did you get talking to her?
Tell us what happened. This is your opportunity, all right? Did they call you Chris or Christopher? Christopher. Christopher, well, you've got kids. Chris, Christopher, whatever. Family needs to know what happened. They need to know why it happened. You're the only one that can tell them that. Unless you're telling me that these other two were with you. So why don't you just tell us how you came upon... Eliana, that's her name. How you came upon her, how you got to talking to her. How did that come about? What happened? What do you say? It's crazy. Where did you run into her? I'm, I'm, I'm a crackhead. I get high and I do stupid shit for people for money. Okay. And everybody you hang with, that you smoke with or get high with, you don't know everybody you deal with. Sure. You don't know everybody's situation or how everybody got in that situation. So, I mean, for me to sit and try to put names or faces to everything that went on that night or that morning, I, it's probably impossible because I was high. So you're telling me there was more than just you there? Is that what you're saying, Chris? By the time I realized how old this girl was, I left. Okay. I left. And it was other smokers around. Yeah, I mean, like, late at night, you're trying to find dope, and you don't know who to ask. So, I mean, smokers come together to get high. You don't even know. It's like, I might not know you if you were getting high. And I'm mm -hmm. like, look, you know where to get something at? Yeah, well, you're going to look out for me? Yeah, whatever. I mean, how this little girl got involved, I do not know. And if I could go back to this day and prevent what happened from happening, I would. Had I been in the house for the remainder of that day, I probably would have never let anything happen. How did she get into the house? Start with that. That part I can't tell you. I was invited in. Okay, who invited you? Um, I can't give you. I don't know the name of somebody I was smoking with. Male, yeah. female? Male, two males. I can't really give you much information on I can tell you that baby between 93rd and 116th as we met walking down across what's that on uh, Bassamer I believe I was coming off um was that Kingsbury walking around trying to find something to get out of it and you run into these two guys yeah I've been bumping into them all night what day did you run into them Wednesday night so Wednesday night you bumped into them mm -hmm. And you ended up at that house? Yeah, because Will didn't even know I had left from over on 84th at that time of night. Okay. How'd you go over to Kingsbury in that area? I rode a bike. Rode a little mountain bike over. Cold as hell, but I was looking to get high. So, I mean, I don't know. I mean. Well, let's start with another question, and we'll, we'll get back to that. What were you wearing? 
was I wearing? Uh huh. I had on light blue work pants. I had on um, old pair of Timberland boots. I had on um, blue work jacket and a black uh, city certified uh, t-shirt. And a black what kind of t-shirt? It's a city certified. Oh, that city was, certified. Yeah, okay. that was the name of the uh, studio. And what bike were you riding? I was riding, riding a blue and green mountain bike. Whose bike is that? Well, it was a bike laying around in the backyard down on 84th. I guess, I guess somebody left it there and I just took it and took off. What color is Timberland Boots or what? Uh, wheat, like a tan or wheat. It, it's not the ones that you guys got. It's not the ones you were wearing? No, none of the clothes that y'all got was anything. That what I did you do with these clothes? Where are they now? They've been washed. Um, the jeans um, are... They might be on 84 because I don't recall taking them to... But I don't know, they might be there. Uh, the t shirts are. The t shirts probably are on 84th. But, I mean, I'm thinking, you know, it's. Why'd you, why'd you wash the clothes? Because yeah, they was dirty. I mean, it wasn't. No, as far as hurting her, no. I had nothing to do with that. I'm going to give you the honest to God truth. They told me. That she was somebody that was getting high or whatever. And now when I see, hear the news and they say she was slow, I understand why she was going along with what they were saying. She was probably scared or whatever. I had no idea. I'm high. I'm just, you get high. You thinking it's cool. I mean, you just women out there that, that sell their body for dope. I mean, what room of the house did you have sex with her in? Um, on the carpet, on the little bundle right there. Which room? Uh, I think it was the little room closer to the door. And after that, I got on the bike and I left. I was going to see somebody to get some more dope, but they wasn't there. So I ended up going back down toward 105 on the bike and by that time it was time for me and Will to go do some work so I never returned to the house and then I saw this shit on the news and I felt some kind of way that this shit actually happened to this yeah I'm like damn when I saw the flyer I'm like wow she was that young and I didn't know I mean because I'm high and I, I'm really not thinking in my right mind and I mean, this one thing to try to lie out of a situation, but then it's like, the only way I can get myself completely out of it is to tell the truth about what, where I participated in this thing. So you have no idea who these two guys are? You said you kept bumping them all night? One guy, um, I know they call him a, uh, I used to see him up on around 123rd a lot, 123rd in Kansas, man. They called him Fonzo. Older guy. Like how old? Probably like between 50, 54. Black guy, white guy? Black guy. The other guy, I don't know. I guess they with each other sometimes from time to time. I don't know. I'm not for sure. How old's the second guy? Uh, maybe the same age, maybe younger. You don't have a name or anything on him? No. Can you describe Fonzo for me? Maybe, um, I would say I'm probably five, nine, five, ten. Okay. So Fonzo would be maybe 
be 6162. Um, what about a filled? Slim. Okay. Like pepper here. Salt and pepper here. It's like a birthmark. What about the other guy? Uh, probably a little shorter than me, a little stocky guy, um, fat face. You said you're 5'9"? Yeah, I'm 5'9 or 5'10", so you would have to be around 5'7", 5'8". Okay. Mm -hmm. Do you recall what she was wearing? No, she was naked when I got there. Well, you were there on Wednesday night. She wasn't picked up until Thursday no. morning. When I went there Wednesday, uh -huh. we was just smoking. We was just getting high. Mm -hmm. I went and got some more dope, came back, and she was already there naked. I don't know how they got her naked, how they got her in there. Okay. She was already naked. And so I'm thinking this is a party. You know, I'm high. I don't, I'm... What time did you leave to go get uh, more drugs? Probably left like four thirty. And what direction did you go when you left? When I left, I rode my bike. I uh, rode the bike down toward, um, I think that's Kingsbury, and I went up, um, came across, um, I believe that's Union. I, I, like I said, I can't be for sure. Well, I'm just wondering what area you bought your drugs at. Uh, from 110 to Miles area. Why go that far away? Just the only people I know that's up that time of the morning. Unless I'm down my way, then I can probably get it anywhere. And what time do you think you got back to the uh, house? Well, when I went and got it, I sit there for a minute and got high, so... I spent like $120. $120? Mm -hmm. So I sit there and I smoke like two 20 pieces and then I went back. It's probably around, by the time I made it back to the house, it was probably about seven, maybe. And she was already inside the house, naked. In what room? In the living room. She was just sitting there quiet. She had like a black hat on. Black hat? That's the only thing she had on was like a black hat. I don't know if it was one of theirs or if it was hers that she had wore. How did the sexual encounter come about? It was basically like, it was like, man, just look out for me and she gonna look out for you, whatever, whatever. Like, lay down and open your legs, go ahead and get my dude son. Oh, so they offer her up to you? They basically. I'm just wondering if you had any conversation with her or no, if she talked never, to you at I all. I never talked to her. Was she, she crying, was, emotional? No, she wasn't Not at all? Crying, no. Uh, that's surprising. I mean, she is. I mean, it's surprising to me now that I look at this and I see what I saw in the news and mm -hmm. I saw the flyers. And I'm like, well. It's, so it's just the three of you inside this house. And basically, it's like. With I her. really didn't even fit inside her, so it was basically me just sitting here and I jacked myself off, basically. Do you use a condom or anything? No. Mm -hmm. I gave the condom to somebody. You gave the condom to somebody. Well, there's only two other guys there. So yeah, who did you I give it to? I gave it to one of them. I mean, I opened it up and I was about to use it, but I just jacked myself off and then I rubbed up against her as I was coming. And so your DNA on the condom wrapper that was in the living room would explain? It was on my hands. It was in, yeah, you, you touched it, you opened it, yeah, and then you handed the open it, condom to the like, other I guy? I gotta go because it's about time for me to go to work. And then you left right after that. Yeah. So you're saying you left the house by seven fifteen? Mm, uh, 
How long did it take you to jack off? I was high, so it didn't take long. So. That's what I figured. That's why I'm asking. Right. So I probably left because I made it back. I got back to the house before we all knew I was gone. I was in the house probably about. I rode the bike straight down to 105, so I got there my, maybe about. Probably got there about 8 Okay. And Will can confirm all this, right? Will didn't know I was going that morning. That you got back? He didn't know I was going. He didn't even know you got no. back that morning? No. Because I left the side door open. You did all this without him knowing that about the house. Right. I left the side door open. I mean, I sneak out a lot to go get high. Because they don't know I get high. Well, he knows. He knows now, but he's the only one in the house that knows I get high. The other guys is like, uh, if you try to keep it a secret because if they knew I got high, they wouldn't want me around the house. There's only one problem with your story, Chris. The footprints in the house. Mm -hmm. There's only one set. They're yours. I don't know how there's only one set. It's like there's only one set. Three people went in there scrapping, and then the two people was in the house with me. I'm not lying to you. I can show you the pictures. There's only one set of footprints in there. Or I should say boot prints in there. Well, so I, I believe the story up to a point. I believe that you were high on drugs. Mm -hmm. I believe that you were out of your mind. Mm -hmm. I, I can believe that point. But I don't believe that two unknown strangers that you've never met before in your life bring you to this house that you've already been to a couple of times mm -hmm. just decide to go to the same house that you've already been to well, I'm and then and then, then you and then you leave and surprisingly in a matter of 10 minutes they find her bring her into the house get her naked and then you return it, it doesn't match up chris so you're you're like halfway there you're halfway to accepting responsibility, I'm, but you're I'm, still I'm trying to you, you're I'm, still I'm trying, trying to blame to, other people. But, no, I'm not trying to blame other people. I'm trying to tell you exactly what happened. Now, you're you're trying to lessen your responsibility for what happened. Christopher, there are two people in the house. You and Aliana, that's it. There weren't two other people in that house. Those two other guys. It was just you two, wasn't it? No. Yeah. I swear on my mom. I'm not going to Don't do that. Please don't do that. Because we we were at the house. We know what the scene mm -hmm. looked like. We know that the the prints that you left behind were bloody prints. They could only have gotten bloody if she was bloody. Do you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You couldn't have just jacked off on her and then left and she was fine if you have bloody prints left in the dining room. Do you understand? I hear you. Okay. So you need to complete the story. You need to tell us exactly what happened. Because this story that you're giving right now is not the truth. All right? Tell me how you met her. Tell me how you got her to the house. As you know from listening to the news stories, this, this girl was a quiet, naive girl. Waiting on a bus. So how did you approach her? This can help out other little kids. Like I said, as far as me with the other guys, yeah, that's just true. Um, they talked to her. We walked to the house. All three of you. We stood in the back for a second. She had walked up the street. Well, this is before we got to the house. She walked up the street and then she came back. She spoke to us. She walked back up the street. She walked down to the corner. Then she walked back up to her fuller. And it's basically like, how you doing? What's going on? You want to go with us? What y'all about to do? Whatever, whatever. I mean, 
What'd you tell her? I told her I was about to get high. And what'd she say? She said, what's that? My dude was like, oh, you don't want nobody getting high. She was like, you don't know what I want to know. So, I mean, it's... Where did you first see her? And I was coming from the gas station to get some single cigarettes. Which gas station? The Sunoco. I left the bike here for, um, because I was walking around. And she was up there by the little appliance store. At the one on 93rd? Mm-hmm. Okay. And I was just, I stood at the bus stop talking to my dude for a minute. He was telling me who had the dope, who didn't have the dope, who had good dope, who didn't have the dope. And she just kept walking by, going back and forth, going back and forth. And each time she would have a conversation with, I spoke to her, he had a little uh, more exchange of words with her. She walked up and stood by the appliance store. She would walk back down toward 93rd and Kansas and then she would walk back up. So I don't know. I mean, at first we didn't know if she was a street walker or not. How was because she dressed? Because we really couldn't see her face. Yeah, how was she dressed? I mean, she had a backpack on and she was dressed like every other. Sometimes you catch a street walker with a backpack and you know because they got to change the clothes in it and what color was the backpack i think it was black black or blue or something like that i don't know like i said i was high okay so it's early morning hours you're not sure she's a street walker she's walking back and forth is there a bus stop near the supply store no the bus stop we were standing at the bus stop which bus stop were you standing at Right there at the corner of Fuller, by the church. Okay. Because we was trying to decide where we was going to get the dope from. And everybody... Well, that's what I was trying to get at. Get every, you to the church. Everybody that's... That we was calling either wasn't even answering her phone or didn't have nothing. So... We just... So the video from the church is going to show us all this? The video from the church is going to show... I, I'm standing there... Um, my dude walked by to show him walking down, talking with Aliana. She probably walking a few steps behind him. And I'm still standing there. Okay. And I walked up the street a little bit. I think that's when I walked and got the cigarettes and I walked back down. Is that about down to 93rd and Kinsman at the Sunoco? No. Or Shell, I, excuse me. Uh, no, I went to Sunoco. Sunoco? I got single cigarettes. I, actually, I didn't get them from the Sunoco. I bought uh, like three single cigarettes for a dollar from somebody walking by. On 93rd? Yeah, on 93rd, yeah. And whereabouts on 93rd did you get them? We was right, like, almost to the light by the Sunoco. At 93rd and Kinsman? Mm -hmm. Okay. And you walk back up towards Fuller. What's going on now? Mm -hmm. He's standing like halfway probably by the field or whatever. And, Cause he was thinking about going and doing some scrapping in the building across the street. And I walked around and cut across the field and she was walking behind us. And we went in the house to get high. She went in the house to get high with you? And no, she did. She, I don't even know why she followed. We didn't ask her to come. I told you, like I said, I told her I'm about to get high. She said, what's that? I mean, he said, you don't want to know nothing about that. And she was like, you don't know what I want to know. So she went into the house on her own? I'm asking you because you were there. I was there. And I, that's like, I just wish she would have never came in. So you and this friend, who is this friend now? Because Fonzo and the other guy are made up. Who is this no, guy? This... Who is this guy that you're alleging was inside? He didn't go in with me at the time. So it was just you and her? Yeah. 
when once you got inside to get high, what happened? Did you get high? Actually, I stood like in the little storm thing and got high just so the wind wouldn't blow my lighter. And you're talking storm door? Yeah. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, that leads to the basement. Okay. Where's she at? She's like standing right there by the door, back door, so you mean it. What happened then? And, um, I came through the house and we sit there, she was like, she just looked at me crazy, like, what does that make you feel like? I, told her, I said it made me horny. I said uh, I asked her if we could get naked and do something. She was like, "It's cold," and but she took her backpack and her jacket off anyway. And I'm thinking it's okay. When did it not become okay for her? Truthfully, I it's like. I don't think because it's like I'm sitting here and I'm looking at her, but I'm, I'm rubbing up against her and she never told me no. She never said stop. She never said anything. Okay. And it's just... Is that really in the living room where you were describing before? Where yeah, this was right, happening? Right. I guess it's the living room or whatever. Right there with a little roll of um, pad and was that? You're talking about by the front door? Yeah, I guess if that's how far it was. Okay. Maybe. What happened after that? After that, it's like... She never... She didn't know or anything or tried to stop what was going on. It's like, I didn't even undress her. She undressed herself. Okay. Well, you said that she took off her jacket and her and her. Yeah, she'd backpack. already got this. Yeah, she'd already took her jacket and backpack off. She undressed herself. Okay. And things kind of got out of hand when. It's like, I went to go get high again and I put my clothes back on and I'm standing there by the back door and I'm getting ready to get high and it's like, I don't know if she, I don't know exactly what happened at that moment, like she attacked me or whatever. Like, if she suddenly realized that was wrong and I need to get away from here, but I was high and it scared me. She came up behind you while you're getting high? Was she screaming? No, never. Never. She pushed you, hit you yeah, when she, she came upon you? She just like pushed me and hit me and it's like, it scared me. So okay. I, mean, I reacted and... I just wish and pray that I was never high at that moment. How? What was your reaction to being scared by her? What did you do is what I'm asking, Chris. I turned around and it's like I punched her, but then it's like after that, it's like a blur. It's like I almost blacked out or something. I don't... Okay. Where would you punch her? I really can't say. I don't know if it's in the left side or the right side of her face. But in her face? Was it with a closed fist or an open hand? It might have been a closed fist, but after that I just blacked out and I just was like, fuck, the fuck have I done, you know, then. When you, the blackout ended and you realized what you had done, what did you do next? Nothing I could do. I just left. Well, you did something before you left. Right? I think everything.
everything was done by the time my, my mind cleared back up. Ooh. You don't remember trying to hide her? Yeah, I did that out of fear. Yeah. So can you tell me how, when your the blackout came, you became clear, you've just realized and what you've I, done? No, I'm scared. Because yeah. So I, what did you try and do and how I did you do it? I dragged her to the closet. You dragged her to the closet? And was that bedroom open or did you have to open no, it? No, everything, the door was open. I just okay. dragged her to the closet because I'm like, what the fuck? Okay. What the fuck did I do? And What did you do I after did, you dragged her there? I ran out the house. Did you take anything with you? I'm asking Chris because her, blood, her backpack is missing. Her jacket's missing. What did you What did you I, take I with it, you? I put it in the garbage. Where at? In the garbage can. And I'm actually the one that took the garbage can up front. You brought the garbage can to the tree lawn? Yes, because it was garbage day. And I'm like, what the fuck have I done? And I'm so nervous and scared now because I'm not high no more. It sobered me up so quick. Sure. And it's like... So you Just, take what you could find inside the house, you put it in a garbage can, you take the garbage can to the tree lawn? What yeah. time does the garbage pickup happen on? Uh, I, I have no idea. But it's Thursday I, I morning. I just know it was garbage day because I heard people say it was garbage day and the okay. garbage needed to go out. Now it's, just, it's like I was, if I could go back, shit would never have happened. I swear to God. What, what else did you hit her with? so high and I was so out of my mind and it's like I was out of character it's just like not me well, let me ask you this Chris now that we've gotten this what happened and how you met her um, would you be willing to give us a sample of your DNA you know there's already one on file you know you don't have to I mean, um, but really what's no, the point no to, I mean, so you'd agree to give us your DNA tonight I mean, really no need to. Okay. I mean, I don't, I, we'll get a kit together and, 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 um, and like, he'll, he'll give you a form to sign, okay? It's like, um, I just want to get some things off my well, chest now. Let me, let me ask you, these, this clothing description that you gave me, mm -hmm. is that really what you it's were wearing? Back to I asked you that because when you described your clothes, um, you said one thing, but then when you said you washed them, you said you took the jeans and the other clothes over had, to 84th. That's exactly what I had on the head. Um, Light blue jeans that got a little hole right here. So they weren't light blue work pants like you described. But they did. I work in them. I call okay. them work pants. So your light blue jeans? Yeah, light blue jeans. Um, and the rest of the clothes were the same? Yeah, it's a tan, um, tan jacket. Tan jacket? What kind of jacket? The jacket is over May on Mayfield. Over on Mayfield? Yeah. You left that there when the officers arrested you tonight? Yeah, they, both jackets were together. I, they, they just picked up one. Okay. They picked up the leather jacket. Um, what were you wearing shirt-wise? I had a Black City certified jacket on. That Black City certified that you described t-shirt? Yeah, t-shirt, yeah. Where is that at? Man, it's probably on 84th. Okay. You you think you washed these clothes? Yeah, the only thing I probably didn't wash was the blue work jacket. And blue work jacket, what's that? It's what? like a just like a blue jacket that I work in. What kind of material? Got a lot of paint on it, like a regular cloth material, like a, with paint splotches. Yeah. And where's that jacket? Oh, uh, eighty four. And does Will really live on eighty fourth? Yeah. What's the real address? What's that closest to? Between Superior and Daiquiri. Superior On the west side of the street. Daiquiri? Daiquiri. Oh, Daiquiri. On the west side? Mm. Right. Will, um, I know. Will, will Will know where these clothes are? In, in, in the room that I used. Where is that at? 
Unless you go up to the up the stairs and make a right. Uh, second bonus, floor. Yeah, you can see when you get to the top of the stairs of the bathroom. Then it's two rooms that'll be to your right. And you turn that way. Room to the right is Will's room. The room to the left is mine. All right. On um, uh, second floor, two rooms. On right, and right. your room is the one on the left. Yes. Okay. Is it possible it, I can probably have some water? Or yeah, I can get you some water. Something, anything. I know I'm not going to We don't smoke anymore down here, so. Uh, but I will get you a water. Hang on a second. Okay, Christopher, it's C H R I S T O P H E R. Whitaker, can you spell your last name? W H I T A K E R. Do you rent a room from my uh, will, Chris? As uh, long as I work, I can use a room. Well, the reason I'm asking is, is it Will's house? Will Will give us permission to um, go to your room, or will you give us permission to get the things from your room? Yeah, I just, I hate that people don't hear this, and my name will be associated with well, this. Well, you can get in front of this by contacting your family yourself when you get over to the jail and let them know what's going on. Better to hear it from you no, than what the media is going to do. I don't even want my name in the media. Yeah, well, we don't have any control over there. You know that. I don't want my face in there. Just like we wouldn't have wanted her picture right. all over the news like they did um, when we found her. I, I, I didn't like that. I didn't want the family to see it that way. Mm -hmm. um, but we don't have any control over it. And I probably just have to be in PC for the rest of my life. Yeah. I'm going to get a consent form to search Will's house. But I'm only going to put on there your room, okay? You're saying that those, these clothing will be in your room? Mm -hmm. All right. Okay, Christopher. Now this says, I, Christopher Whitaker, having been informed of my constitutional rights not to have any specimen taken from my person without a judicial order. That'd be like a, like a search warrant or a court order. And my rights refuse to be and of my rights to refuse consent to such, hereby authorized, that's me, Detective Tim Antonat, Detective Kathleen Carlin, to obtain such specimens, all reduced to take saliva, okay, as they deem necessary for the purpose of their investigation. This written permission is being given by me to the above officers voluntarily and without threats or promises of any kind. You understand all this? Want me to repeat anything to you? We're not making any threats or promises here, are we? Okay. Chris, would you please sign right here where it says signed, and today is February 2nd, 2017. I don't know what you said today was. Uh, it's February 2nd, 2017. Sentence me, get it over with. I don't, because I didn't, I didn't even want this to happen. If I was sober and in my right state of mind, it wouldn't have happened. So I mean, I got what I got coming, and I deserve it. I will write a formal apology to her family that they probably don't want to hear, but I will do it anyway. I just want, I don't want a circus made out of this. I just want to go to court. Get it over with. Just, I just feel devastated right now that I'm sober and I can think about this shit. And I don't even want to talk about it. I don't even like talking about it. But because I was fucked up. I mean, I never, I had been clean for like three years. And it's like when I started using again, it's like it turned me into a monster. And I don't like who I became. And I really, I really apologize and I, I swear if I could, I would switch places with her right now. And 
she didn't deserve that. I didn't, if I was in my right state of mind, it never happened to her. And I just feel like crying for her right now because I, I, I shouldn't have never even did that. And I just, you will never understand my feeling right now. Because I mean, it's like, it was like a totally different side of me. And I just, I swear to God, I just wish I would have never done that, man. I just wish I would have never gotten high that night and would have never led to that that morning. I swear, I just I couldn't couldn't even look at the TV knowing what happened. And people were looking at me like a monster. I'm not a monster. I'm just an addict that made a mistake. What shouldn't have happened? And And I always say, once I sobered up and I thought about it, I said, if I ever get caught, I'll kill myself. Because I, it's like, it's no explanation as to why it happened, what it happened for. And I mean, the world is going to hate me now. And she never had a chance to grow up, never had a chance to experience anything. And I took that away from her. And there's nothing I can do to bring her back or Get for forgiveness for her family. I mean, I just so fucking sorry. Man. I swear. Okay, Christopher. There's two, two, there's two Q-tips in here. Take them both at the same time. Rub them inside your cheeks. I tell you when to stop. Okay. Go. Yeah, at the same time, do like right cheeks and your left cheeks. Switch sides now. When you dragged her to the other bedroom, you said you put her up by the closet. Yeah, I mean, because I, I, I at, at that time my mind was becoming clear as to what I just done, and I. I hate myself. I swear to God, I hate myself. When you saw her, what did she look like to you? I got sober up. Mm -hmm. A kid. And that's what makes it so bad. That's why I couldn't face nobody. That's why I just... Was she still alive and dragged to the other bedroom and put her by the closet? you tell she was moving? Did you hear her like no, she wasn't moving or anything? Yeah. I, just, I don't I really don't I don't even think about it because I, I hate the fact that it even happened. Do you recognize either of those houses? looking because this is like uh, older pictures but that's will's house yeah, this is right okay so that's 1338 and this is 1340 the trees covering it yeah. okay uh, i just wanted to make sure that i had the right house numbers that's why i thought i'd show you a picture of the house and this is what came up on google is 1340 but i couldn't see it mm -hmm. so okay um today's date is the that right now is um like these parts up here, it's green. We actually started painting the house, so it's green up top, and the awning is green. Okay. And what time did you say it was? I'm sorry. It was 9.57 p.m. Christopher, do you have a middle initial? Yeah. What does that stand for? Lamar. L-A-M-A-R. Well, I didn't need to know. I was just curious. Jimmy's still on vacation? Yes. I just say it now, it's like I don't really care what happened to me. I'm just, like I was just telling him, I'm just, I wish I would never got high and then she would still be here. Well, as
as I said, it's important for you to get in front of this with your family. You know that. This is a single family home. And it's the upstairs bedroom. I'll put second floor bedroom. Actually, in this window right here, these two windows right there. Okay. How do you describe him? Because he doesn't rent, he doesn't own. Occupant? Yeah. I'd say so. Okay. What I have here, you're describing this as this address at 1340 East 84th as where you live in your friend Will's house. Uh, we have Will's last name, right? Rucker. Rucker. Will Rucker's house. And you said you live on the second floor and you're pointed to these windows that are visible. Mm -hmm. Can you put your initials over those windows as those are the I windows to your... We'll mark that with a marker. Yeah, go ahead. I'll take that. If you can just put your initials over the window showing those, that's where your uh, room is. Okay. Um, and you're giving us consent to go to your room and remove these items that you described to be wearing except for the tan jacket. Was the tan jacket over or under um, the other jacket? It's under. Okay, under, all right. Um, that's at Mayfield, but the jeans, the shirt, the, the uh, work jacket, and the boots are all in this bedroom. Okay. Um, I have here on today's date at 2157, which is 957 p.m., Christopher L. Whitaker is giving us permission Detectives Carlin and Antonak of Cleveland Police to uh, conduct a complete search of your second floor bedroom at 1340 East 84th. You are the occupant of that bedroom, is that correct? And you have no objections to us searching. Okay, can you sign right there? <coughs> and then on the line below, Chris, if you could sign today's date, which is the 2nd of February. Two two seventeen. Okay. Yeah, I made a mistake. Nope. Oh, did you? They put, the and they put down January second. It's February. When you said you punched her, what did she like fall back or something like that? I don't remember. Like, like I said, when I turned around and went into. That rage, it's like I blacked out. And... Did you have those tools with you when you went to the house? Was that something you were carrying around? No. Whose backpack is that? Actually, those tools was there. They were there at the house? I remember seeing them there. Where did you see them in the house? Sitting on the ledge by the window. Did you use any of those tools? I don't remember what I picked up. I'm telling you, honest to God, too. I don't remember what I did. I just remember when I came through that it had happened, and I was just disgusted right now with myself. Look, yeah, Chris, there's just one more question that we have for you as far as that's concerned, because I can see this is uncomfortable for you. I appreciate you telling us what happened, but there's one thing that's I, I, not... I gotta get it out because well, I swear. After you dragged, Aliana into that bedroom there's evidence that you then did something to her before you left do you recall that I'm being honest with you I don't remember your name but I'm being absolutely honest with you okay um, I mean I was there's indications based on the condition of the room um, that you then cut her one more time at least do you recall that Um, Chris, is there anything else you want to tell us that we can share with the family? Something that you want to get off your chest to them before we finish this? And I just regret getting high and if I, I was in my right state of mind and their child would still be here. It's like, 
I mean, I, a lot of things get blamed on drugs, but like I told him, I was clean for three years, and then it's like when I started getting high again, I don't know what happened. It just turned on a monster inside of me, I guess. I don't know, and I just hate myself so much. But if I could trade places with her, I would trade places with her in a heartbeat. And I would rather her be alive and me. Did you actually go back after this all happened? Did you actually ride your bike back to East 84? I actually, I, I, I went, I started to go back, but it's like, for some reason, I just, at that particular time, I couldn't leave. So I had to call Will to come get me the next day because like. The next day on Friday? I guess whatever that day was. So you stayed the night in that house? No, not in the house. Oh, where did you stay? I went to uh, back to Ray's house. Because when we leave, we leave the back door open. And I slept right there on the, um, in the dining room next to the heater. In those clothes? No. I what did you do with those clothes? I had to change the clothes. I put those clothes in the bag. Okay. And I just slept. You know why I'm asking you that, right? Yeah. I mean, anybody that would have seen you would have noticed all the blood that was right. on you. But it, it really, it wasn't a lot of blood on me. Really? It really wasn't. Because when I looked at myself, it was like it was more dirt <coughs> from getting the furnace out of the house and doing work for Ray and Will than it was any blood. Did you see any blood on you at all? It's like I had probably blood on the palm of my hands that I washed off. And That's how you got that handprint on the shelf in there? I, I guess. You don't remember that? I, I, like I said... <coughs> I wasn't, that I wasn't bullshit. You actually have a palm print on the... I didn't on the, really come through until it was like I looked at the shit like... And I moved her and I was... <coughs> Did you get hurt or cut in any way during this thing? No. So none of that blood is going to be yours? No. How much time did you spend in the house after you dragged her to that bedroom? I don't know because I went from in a rage to being in shock, so I don't know if I was moving fast or moving slow. I'm just going to keep it honest with you. I don't really recall. I don't. Did you really get a flyer on from that? those people yes. on Friday? Yes. Was T with you when you got yes. that flyer? Yes. You were in that car as you described yes. with his... Girlfriend's cousin? Yes, and we went to the U-Haul on 55th and got a U-Haul, and I drove the U-Haul, and we moved her stuff. And so all that was true? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Do you know T's real name? No. Alright. Anything else you want to tell us? We may come back and talk to you tomorrow. Actually, that's, uh, yeah, tomorrow is in Friday morning. Um, after we talk to the prosecutor and see what's going to happen, okay? If you want to. I mean, All right. I'm, I'm not going nowhere. <laughs> okay. Obviously. Uh, let's go check with our boss real quick and make sure. Um, actually, I'm going to finish filling this out if you want to check with and see if there's anything else okay. we need to. Um, I'm, this is the booking slip that I have to fill out here. Um, I got blackmail. And you're 44, you said? Do you have a driver's license or anything? No, I was actually uh, in the process of trying to get my, um, my birth certificate was actually... This is your old one? Yeah, it expired in 2013. Okay. Um, what complexion? How would you describe your complexion? Um, they have dark, medium, light. Dark. Uh, okay. Um, you are 5'10". Do you have an occupation or anything that's uh, for you? Okay. Do you have alias information? Anything else that you go by besides Christopher or Chris? Mm, you can call me the big dog or the big dog. Big wit. Um, who is your emergency contact? Uh, after this shit, I don't think I'm going to have one. Who would you like listed for, for now? Um, 
So who would you like listed as your emergency contact? What family member or friend uh, do you want listed down here? Uh, Anita Jackson and Martha Jackson. All right, I'll put Anita, because we can only put one here. Mm -hmm. And you describe your relationship as friend. Mm -hmm. And uh, her address is? Do you know the zip over there by any chance? Uh, I think it's phone number again. Do you have any recent injuries or anything that we need to know about? Um, do you have any uh, health, uh, medical conditions, heart, asthma, any of that stuff? No. Any contagious diseases? No. Are you under any medical care right now? No. Are you taking any medications? No. Any special diet or anything? No. Okay. Um, you have no handicaps or physical or, or mental? Are you the, under the influence of any alcohol or drugs right now? No, no. All right, you're not aggressive. Um, you have any history of suicide attempts or are you at risk? I don't know the way I feel right now after waking up to this shit. I don't know. I don't know what I'm subject to. We have to ask those questions. If we ask those questions and you have any feelings that you're going to harm yourself, you need to tell us about it so that they can put you on suicide watch. So let us know. I just feel like I need to be then a suicide watch or PC. Okay, we can do that. Do you have any um, injuries, trauma, bleeding, anything like that that we need to take care of? No. How about any rashes, lice, anything else like that? No. Okay. Right. You're familiar with that, like, that whole nine thirds area from like Kinsman all the way down to Harvard? Yeah. There's been a bunch of other women. I know I was I was friends with uh, Chris. What's you, what's Chris's last name? I have to I forget her last name, but they found her naked, and I was friends with her. You know, I had nothing to do with that. I mean, I like I I can honestly tell you the only times like I ever like the case I had and. That was like sex or drugs going wrong, and this one, that's the only time I've ever did anything like sexually violent. What kind of stuff would you, would you do with Chris? Would you hang around and all that? And we was just all cool. We used to hang in front of the building right there. Um, right there, uh, I did up uh, in the floor of the building that just got tore down. Just mm -hmm. hanging in front of there and just hang out, kick it, got high together, and just she was real cool people. Smoking crack or other drugs? Yeah, crack, weed, drinking. Okay. I mean, she was real cool people. I mean, never bothered nobody. That's why when she came up dead, it's like it shocked all of us. When was her? Uh, when did she come turn up dead? That was a couple years back. Right this is 2017, and we're talking. 
But then I can't really, I'm thinking maybe 2014, 2015, maybe she's been there about three or four years now, I believe. Do you remember what time of season, what season of the year it was? I think it was like probably maybe fall or spring. I know it was either the end or the beginning of summer. It's like, like a sprawl, fall or spring season. Okay. Where was she found at? I don't know, I thought it was on Fuller, but they said it was a couple streets over from Fuller. And, um, found naked in the back of the field or something. Oh, she was one in the field? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Did you know any of the other women that were? No. Did you hear anything about it? Yeah, I heard about it. We was watching the whole thing. Which one did you hear about? Pretty much everything on uh, 93rd. I mean, I guess I, I, I probably got the stories worried about the, the one girl going to, uh, I guess she was going to work or school or something. Like, it's, I'm not really familiar. It's like, I only know as much as I saw on the news as far as about the rest of them. But yeah, I've seen it. But Chris is the only one that I actually knew. And there's that one white girl, Ashley, nothing about that. I didn't even know a white girl came up missing over there. Yeah. I mean, I mean, see white people over there, but I mean, most of them, they come do what they're going to do. And Get out. Right. About, was it Jasmine? Mm-hmm. Yeah. The other, one was a ja the other one was named was Jasmine. Is that yeah. Rainy Bells? Yeah. No one talked about anything over there? About that happening, or no. who was involved? No. Yeah, that was up nicer down towards like Booth and Harbor down that way. Uh, well, I'm, like right there is like where I'm normally hanging at. It's like just right there in that pretty much that area right there, the 93rd full area. Other than that, I'm not familiar with that. I know some old lady up on uh, up on Mara. I think that was a couple years ago, maybe. Mara, maybe more than that. I mean, feel free to test my DNA or whatever gets anything you want to. I mean, I'll tell you everything I did and that was... Well, you're being cooperative, you're talking to us. We just thought we'd ask, since you're familiar with the area and the people in the area, maybe you heard something that we didn't know. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, I'm sure you've heard that the media is trying to link everything together. Yeah, well, I see they trying to say it's all We're not trying to insinuate that at all, mm -hmm. just so you know, Chris. We're just trying to find out, if, mm -hmm. since you're out there, if you've heard anything. Right. I mean, you're an older person. Actually, like more, I don't think it's a serial time. killer. I think things is just happening random, and I don't know. I mean, I can't speak for everybody else, but my actions was drug related. I mean, some people just do it. I mean, because of I guess they're trying to. It's a power thing, or did you hear any rumors about? why Chris was killed or who could have done it? Uh, no, the thing with Chris is, I mean, she had dates and, you know, sometimes, you know, these women go on dates and, you know, why are you trying to, I mean, the way things go is like, you, if you're on a date with a woman, you, while you trying to spend as little money as possible and getting, um, some type of sexual favor out of it. Sure. She's trying to it's smoke as much as she can and give nothing. So that's how it going. I mean, I guess, you know, with in Chris's case, maybe the guy was like, man, fuck this. Yeah. Before you found out that she was killed, when was the last time you saw her before then? I think I had moved by that time and I'm trying to remember was I, I think I was in either, I think I was in Indian Hills at the time. And that time that she was killed? Yeah, because it got back to us. Because at the same time, I think Rob had got killed. And, and he lived in the back of the building that got tore down. Rob who? I don't know his last name. But I'm just, so we can get a timeline going, you yeah, know? Yeah, I think right, cause I think Rob had already, uh, they, they, they tried to set fire to the building to cover it up. I mean, um, I heard about, about it all. And 
and Chris used to hang out with Rob a lot, so I don't know if that all was related or if Chris was on a date and frustrated her date and he couldn't, I don't know what happened. Any rumors or anything being said in the streets about how Chris was killed? Or what she was killed with? No. No. I just find it hard to believe that no one's doing any talking out there. Right. I mean, and you know how they, that works. They look at it like, okay, it's a smoker, it's a crackhead, it's it's a berry, so fuck it. I mean, that's I mean, it's sad, but that's how they look at things. Alright, right, Christopher. We're gonna get our business cards for you. Then we'll walk you over to the city jail and uh, book you. Make sure that you call your family as soon as you get it. You're able to get a phone call, all right? All right, we'll be right back. Well, these clothes that are in this house, uh, where in the bedroom will we find them? They should be right there. It's, um, they're not in the drawers. They're, um, the jacket should be laying when you, as soon as you go through the door. Okay. Um, it's like a little round table right there, and the jacket should be laying right across that. And there's a stool by the window that should have the rest of the clothes on there. I'm okay. going to have to go through them and find a t-shirt. It's a couple black t-shirts with city certified on it. And take them all out. Okay. What kind of guy is Will? So you going to have any problems or issues with us? Mm -hmm. If he sees that you've signed this, will he allow us to go in? For one, I'm going to tell you, he's going to probably be in shock that, yeah. that it was me. Well, we're not going to tell it, Will about anything you said or anything like that. So we're just saying, hey, you know, Christopher signed us. We just want to get, he wants to get some stuff out of him. Yeah, he's a pretty decent guy. Okay. Do you know if he's home right now? He probably is. He probably is just coming in from school. Where does he, where does he go to school? Um, uh, he's going to broadcasting school, technical college, I believe. Okay. All right, let's get to We'll get you those cards and we'll be right back, all right? You don't have any pockets, but that's my business card. My partner's got a business card for you. There you go. Um, we can put those in your property if you want when we get over there. And so you don't have any property. They'll, They'll let you hold on. At least that way you know who you talk to in, in that, okay? Um, I know I probably don't have the room to ask for any favors or anything, but... Um, Like I 
I said, I don't know how long, whatever, but I know I won't be home no time soon. And mm-hmm. it's a lot of people, once they hear this, they're not going to want to talk to me no more. And it's one person that I really have wanted to apologize to. And I don't know if I'm be able to make that phone call. Who's or that? To Deborah. Okay. And Deborah is the number you gave me, and she's the one that... Uh, just, yeah, okay. I mean, you want Deborah to be called and let her know what's going on, in case she, I, you can't get to it. I just want to... I, I don't know how to tell her, but I just wanted to call her and just tell her, look, I, I apologize. I mean, I'm here. This is what happened, and just... I don't know. I mean, I just... I hate myself right now. I fuck this little girl's life around. I don't know, I just, I probably call anybody else from the phone whenever they give me a phone call, but I was just wanting to, just that one last time to call Deb and just tell her, you know, I, I apologize and this is what happened. You, know? you want to make the kind of phone call from here, is that what you're saying? If, it's, if it was possible. What's your number? No, you can have a conversation with her. Uh, but don't make any other calls when you're done. I'm not. Okay. Hello? You did? Hello? Can you hear me? Um, um, you know I was uh, on Fuller at that time when a girl came up missing, right? And we were scrapping in the house, so they picked me up in susp- on suspicion of that. So I'm I'm sitting in the county now under suspicion of that. No, but they only no. They I didn't I didn't do it, Dad. I didn't do it, Dad. Dad, listen, I didn't do it. Do you hear me? That's a, this is why the detective is letting me use the phone. I'm on the detective's phone right now. They called they called you for me to explain this. Because they said, is there anybody you want to talk to to explain what's going on? Because the media is going to make an ass out of you right now. I know I was there. I knew it, Deb, and I saw. I'm, I love you, Deb. I'm so sorry. So I gave. The, I had to get him permission to call you and to. Um, I gave him permission to call you. They gonna call Will. They gonna call Ray and everybody that I was with. And until they get to the bottom of it, they are going to. Um, I, I, I'm gonna be sitting here with no bun. And I mean, when I get out of here, I can't even show my face in Cleveland now because they done already convicted me of this shit. Right, the media has already convicted me. That's why I wanted to talk to you so you can let people know that I, you are. No, they did not. No, they. No, listen. Listen, they did not. That's why the detective was allowing me to call you to explain this thing. Because they know the media is going to put it out of hand and they want me to call. They wanted me to call you to let you know. They said, is it anybody that you want to call? And, and so this is me calling you to let you know that they picked me up for it because we were scrapping in that house. My fingerprints was in the house. I took out the furnace. It, I took the Huh? Exactly. That's why my fingerprints was in the house. And not to mention, I already, I'm already on file as an offender with my ex-wife. 
So that's why I was a target. This is, this is how the system works. So I'm here and if by any means they decide to convict me on this, then all I can say to you is I'm sorry, I didn't do it. They took, I gave them my DNA so they can run the test and I won't know nothing until probably they said it'll take about a week. Do you hear me? So, I mean, Hey, listen, listen, I'm letting you know now, I gave them permission to take my DNA. My DNA is on file. All they had was my fingerprints in the house. I gave them permission to go over the wheels and get my clothes so they can run DNA on my clothes. I had to give them permission to do all of this so that they can see that it wasn't me. So the only way, I'm, I'm just gonna have to sit here until they um come up with it. And it's like, they just want to convict somebody of this shit. And I'm the one that's getting convicted because. So they was even asking me questions about the other murders on, on 93rd. So. I don't know how long I'm going to talk to you until they come and get the phone because I got the detective's phone right now. So, I mean, I'm here. They came and they had actually, um, they was doing a check and they went to Martha's house because that's where my name is registered to. Huh? Right. And so I, I called them and I told them where I was at and I was at Rose's house. So that's where they came and picked me up at. And they was like, you're, uh, put your hands behind your back, you're under arrest, whatever, whatnot. And they never told me, they, they made me think that it was um, just um, because I wasn't in the same place. We gotta take you over. Okay, so I'm, I gotta get off the phone now. So if I get another chance to call you, I will uh, to that. Just keep in touch with Martha and she'll keep you posted on what's going on with me. You don't have to worry about that. Trust me. Serious. I love you, Dad. All right. Yeah. As soon as I'm able to get a visitor, she'll come down. Well, good. Now you just got to call. Make your other calls. Now this one's going to start. Yeah, that's the most important call. She said everything is already on Facebook. Really? Yeah. And the news and on Facebook already. Put your hand in front of here. So, I mean, I really don't even, I can't, I can't even face population right now, so. He wants me to do that while we were in talking with you. Mm -hmm. He says it's already on 